All right, it's winter, it's cold, and that means vitamin D is the topic on just about everyone's brain, all right? So today we're gonna to be talking about a few different questions we get on a regular basis about vitamin D. What it is, what does it do? What about rat poison? That's huge right now, and we'll, we'll go through that and debunk it. And then which form is better, D2 or D3, right? So we're gonna to try to go through all that. I'm gonna to try to give you as much context as I can, as much information as I can. I'm gonna to try to draw as little as I can because I don't wanna subject anyone to that. So we'll dive right in. So one of the top questions I get asked as a health coach here all the time is what even is vitamin D? Everyone knows they need to take it to some degree, but what is it, what does it do? Well, vitamin D is both a vitamin and a hormone. So its technical name is Colicosiferol or ergocosiferol. We'll discuss that when we get down to this last question. But essentially, it's the sunshine vitamin, right? So it is synthesized in our skin. We receive the kind of activation parameters from the sun or through supplement form. And it is utilized in so many different processes in the body that I'll try to go through just the specifics. So the number one thing most people think of when they think of vitamin D is bone health. And True, that is huge with vitamin D, but how it affects bone health is a little bit nuanced, right? So it regulates a couple of key minerals called phosphorus and calcium. And calcium being the main thing that it controls, it helps to regulate the parathyroid gland to get calcium kind of out of the food you're eating or whatever else, get it up taken into the tissues, right? And then through parathyroid upregulation, you're gonna get that vitamin D to the bone where it's needed, um, to the muscles, where it's needed to activate uh, movement, right? You move your arms or anything else, you have these calcium channels, and for those to work, you gotta have vitamin D helping you absorb that calcium, right? Now, what else does it do? Well, it's a hormone, like I said, so it regulates a lot of different hormone processes in the body, and uh, not necessarily with the sex hormones specifically. A lot of people think that you have to have vitamin D for testosterone function, and to a degree, you have to have that for some of these sex hormones. But it's not the end all be all. You can have low vitamin D and you can have optimal um, sex hormones. But you do have to have optimal vitamin D for proper inflammation response, proper immune function response. Um, like I said earlier, proper bone function and regrowth, proper muscle function and repair, so many proper cardiovascular function. I mean, you need it for so many different processes, not to mention that vitamin D deficiency is linked to more than 30 forms of cancer, a ton of different immune deficiency issues. And as we found out with COVID, you've got to have it for even the common cold, circulating COVID, and just about any other sickness that you can imagine might be helped by just maintaining at least optimal levels of vitamin D. And what are optimal levels? Um, most of your medical journals will recommend about 30 nanograms per deciliter on a blood test. And that's the same standard across most journals. Um, your functional practitioners, like the Institute of Functional Medicine and such, will recommend a bit higher, maybe closer to 50. All we know is you don't necessarily wanna get it too, too high, like above 100. Then you can start you know, messing with the thyroid a little bit, maybe getting a little bit to that toxicity level. But when we talk about toxicity, which we'll here in just a minute, it's not you know to the equivalent of rat poison. So, is vitamin D in rat poison, right? Yes, vitamin D is in rat poison. No, you're not taking rat poison, and here's why. So with vitamin D being a rat poison, you're getting about, let's see here. Imagine this as an amount of vitamin D, and then imagine this right here as another amount of a vitamin D, okay? This, is the amount of vitamin D in rat poison. This is the amount of vitamin D in, let's see, a bottle of 5,000 IU. Now you can pretty well guess how many hundreds, if not thousands of bottles it's gonna to take to fill that circle up. Now I would, like to propose that just about anything you take, hundreds or thousands of bottles of, has a good chance of killing you, including things we use on a daily basis that aren't vitamins. The equivalence is about 400 
to 500,000 units of vitamin D equivalent to a very large amount of rat poison, meaning that enough to actually kill a rat, right? So case in point, you're not going to take enough vitamin D to equate to rat poison. You would have to have your stomach pumped first because of the amount of just the volume of pills you would have to take to even fit this much in, or the amount of oil from the liquid versions would make you sick bef well before you got to this amount. So just dispelling this belief is something that, you know, demands talking about. We've gotten this question a lot and it's really just silly. You know, I don't know that anybody has been fooled for the last, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years or longer that this has been an ingredient in rat poison and for it to just come out now is just a symptom of social media and people trying to get clicks. Uh, I take vitamin D every day. My family, my entire family takes vitamin D every day. And the majority of people in this area and everybody just about the shops with us takes vitamin D every day and we have yet to have any reports of anything negative happening. And I encourage you to do your own research, look it up. Um, the conversion for this is not fun. It's a lot of chemistry, but hey, you know, I always encourage people to do their own research on this. So if you want to be sure, do the math, check it out for yourself, compare the two. And I think you'll find that the 5,000 units you might be taking, even 10,000 units you might be taking during the winter months to keep your numbers up, keep your immune system function high, healthy, is not going to be anything to be concerned about. So which form of vitamin D is better, D2 or D3? Well, first off, what's the difference? So vitamin D3 is known as colocalciferol. Vitamin D2 is known as ergocalciferol. That's not going to be on the quiz. What you need to remember is D2 is from plants. D3 is what we synthesize in our skin. Okay. So from a natural versus unnatural perspective it's not that one's synthetic and one is not it's just that one is more bioavailable and one is less so this one is less bioavailable and this one is more bioavailable now does that mean you have to take one or the other not necessarily a lot of vegans will typically go for maybe a d2 which will be plant-based or mushroom based and that's totally fine you just might need to take more and I highly encourage you, if you are doing that, to keep an update on your levels. You can get vitamin D tests very easily. We sell them here at the store, and it's a finger prick. Or you can just come in and get blood work done with our nurse, and she can tell you with relative haste how um, much you might uh, be deficient if you are taking it from this source. And vitamin D3. There are plenty of people that don't absorb D3 well also. I know clients that I've had that have to take 10,000 units a day just to stay afloat. So, you know, it doesn't mean that one is better or worse. It just means that you need to keep track of these numbers no matter what to ensure that you're getting what you need. With D3, the reason it's typically more bioavailable is because it's natural to the human body because we have the, the process by which to synthesize it in our skin cells. So you're going to get this conversion from the sun, which is 25-hydroxy vitamin D, and it's going to convert to colocalciferol. And we're going to absorb that to do all the things I talked about in the first question, right? Muscles, bone, health, all the things, hormone health. Now, why don't we sell that much vitamin D2? Or why don't you see it that much? Well, it's primarily because D3 is more bioavailable. It just seems to work better, right? And D3 comes from a couple of different sources. You can get it from, in most cases, sheep lanolin, which would be uh, a fur byproduct from sheep. Or you can get it from a uh, fish extract, which is the predominance of what most people end up getting, especially if you've heard of cod liver oil. It's a natural source of vitamin D3, and a lot of companies will source it from fish uh, because it's very effective and very low allergen load. Now, on the whole, I think you can take either, and you're going to be fine. It all roots back to just making sure, and this is how I have my clients test, if they have enough, is test it twice a year. So biannual, you want to do it in the winter and you want to test in the summer and we compare. Now for me, my levels stay pretty high throughout the year. I just take vitamin D in the winter. I take it for about six months out of the year. And then the other six months I typically take off. Now I do take five to 10,000 units, which might be more than you're comfortable taking. So if you're taking a lower amount, 
you might want to consider keeping a closer eye on that blood work, making sure that it's keeping you stable. And then maybe you take it year round. It doesn't matter what way you go about it. So long as you are paying attention to your blood levels, it's like checking oil in a car. You wouldn't let your car hopefully run low on oil. So don't let your nutrient levels run low either. And vitamin D, because it is so important for so many different physiological processes, you have to make sure that you have adequate levels in your blood. So I hope this helps. Um, I try not to draw too much, so hopefully it kept you awake. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please reach out to us at nutritionw.com. If you want to schedule an appointment with any of our coaches, you can do that there as well. And we hope to see you soon.